Hey, what's good y'all, it's a trill. I know I'm late, seems to be like an ongoing theme with me recently. Last year I didn't do one of these out of laziness and because it was like my first time at CES, I wasn't trying to do too much. But this year I'm trying to tell y'all my top five things that I saw at CES 2023. Cause I flew out there from Milwaukee to Las Vegas and I wanted to see what was up with it for myself. So now we gotta go ahead and check out some of the top things that I saw at CES. I ain't spending all that money on hotel and flight and all that for nothing. We gonna get some content out on this. So the fifth thing I want to go and talk about is the Sony Honda Afila car. So I saw this and you could just see it in the video. It looks crazy as it is. Now this ain't the first year Sony and Honda showed off a concept car at CES. They actually did it last year too. So this is their concept car right here and they say they want to bring it out to the market in 2025, but we'll have to see about that. It's actually a prototype of their first mid-size sedan, but if we actually look here on the front of the bumper, you can see that we have this thing called a media bar. So it's going to tell you things like the end cabin temperature and you could change like the logo of the car and you can do all this stuff with it supposedly. So I thought that was pretty dope just on its own right right there. I don't know if it's like OLED or what, but I thought that was cool. And at one point, I'm pretty sure I saw an advertisement on there. So if they're going to do that on our like release cars, I don't know about that. That's like, that's kind of sketch in my opinion. Like I'm going to spend all this money on the car and I'm going to get ads on it. And pretty much with a partnership like this, Honda's going to build the car itself in their own factories and Sony's going to provide the entertainment like you might expect. But if you didn't know this, Sony makes, obviously they make cameras, so they're gonna make the 45 cameras that's gonna be on the car. That's crazy to think about. Inside and outside, they got 45 cameras total, and that's gonna be so like the car can make sure you're attentive and all that. I don't know how you feel about that. Me personally, I don't want my car telling me what to do, but I guess, you know, that's safe and everything, but still, I don't know if I'm feeling that. Now, if you actually look inside the car, good thing I brought my S22 Ultra because I could get this like super far zoom, but if you look inside of it, you can see this long stretch of just screen. It's all screen on the dash. And then Sony was talking about how you got these accent colors inside that you could change, but I mean, to me, that ain't really nothing new. I'm used to it. Like in my car, I can do that myself, so I mean... Okay, that's cool, I guess, thanks. Number four is gonna be the announcement Samsung made where you can actually have Philips Hue Sync built into your Samsung Smart TV. That's crazy. I use that all the time. I bought like three Philips Hue Sync boxes and they're like 220 each or something like that. Like, it's crazy how much these things cost because Philips Hue is just like, they be taxing on their stuff for real, for real. But the fact that I can go to the YouTube app and now I have to use my Xbox or something like that just to go ahead and sync the colors of my TV, like that's revolutionary for me because all I use is Tizen. Now they said it's only going to be on their Samsung Q series, so I'm pretty sure they said starting with the Q60 and I have a Samsung Q95B Neo QLED TV, so it's already on the Samsung App Store for me. But then I got something like my Samsung Smart Monitor over here and I got my Samsung the frame TV and it ain't compatible with either of those. The craziest part though, I gotta say, I think the app is like 120 or something like that to activate. What? I wasn't really expecting them to make a free app after they were selling these 220 sync boxes, but really 120 bucks for an app are you crazy and you can only use it on one tv you can't transfer it from one samsung tv to another like all right you don't even buy it on the samsung app store you download the free app and then you buy it through philips themselves well you still buy it through samsung checkout but you don't buy it on the samsung app store besides all that though i still gotta say it's pretty dope next up is gonna be the samsung odyssey neo g9 so it's like a curved gaming monitor and i was there with a few youtubers so it was me tk from total tech mike from tech 702 and then there was ben from love or tech we was all I'm pretty sure playing asphalt on there and we was all impressed because it was like it fills up your whole peripheral vision like perfectly I always saw curved monitors as a gimmick and then when I saw this here it was a 4k screen I was like yo this is actually something else right here now me I'm still using a flat screen widescreen LG monitor over here to edit it with and all that but like if I was gaming I would have like a gaming PC and all that I would probably cop that they got all these food stamp dodges they must have paid them a license <laughs> or something in there yeah. Getting a lover, finally getting a lover tech feature on the Latrell Jennings come channel. On, come on, come on. What's good, Troll family? What's Another food stamp dodge. Yeah, how good? many how many people need a tax return out here today? What's going on, man? What's oh, good, two series. Two series. Said tech family. Nah, this display is nuts. They don't got a price or nothing like that because, you know, when you go to CES, they don't really tell you prices and nothing like that if it's not out yet. But at the same time, like, we'll have to see soon. All right, next up, we got the Samsung the Terrace. So this ain't really nothing new, really. But, I mean, it was new to me, and I wanted to see it in person for a minute now. So I always wanted an outdoor TV, and when I saw the Samsung the Terrace, like, they showed me it in person, I was like, okay, this is decent right here. And even the sizes themselves. It was definitely bigger in person, gentlemen. All right, pause. But I got to say, I was pretty impressed when I saw it because they had their full sunscreen and then they had their partial sunscreen and the full sunscreen screen was like 
brightening, like it was blinding me. And cause it's an outdoor TV, like you don't have to cover it or nothing like that. It can get wet, it can do all that. And like, you don't have no issues with that. And same with the remote. Even the remote is water resistant. You could just leave it on your patio table and it'll be all right. And number one, the most impressive thing I saw at CES was the LG Gram style. Like sheesh, y'all should have saw it in person. Like it's in the name, it's the most beautiful laptop I've ever seen. Like that color was just jumping with the gradient and all that. I was just like, yo, is this like real? And then when you just look at the laptop itself, you could just see that it's clean, it's pretty much just a keyboard there. But then when you put your finger on it, then you can see the trackpad. I was like, I was just blown away right there. It's gonna be one of those force touch trackpads like Apple introduced in their MacBooks that I ain't really feeling, but I thought it was pretty cool on that laptop. Again, I don't really know the price, and to be honest with y'all, I don't really know much about the functionality, but just the design itself, like I got eye candy right there. Now I do got some honorable mentions too I wanna throw at y'all. So the first one's gonna be the LG OLED Flex. So the LG OLED Flex is basically just a monitor that like curves in real time, which to be honest with y'all, I don't really see no functionality in that. I ain't see the point. But at the same time, I saw it in person, I saw how it worked and I thought it was cool. The next honorable mention is gonna be the LG OLED T and that's gonna be their transparent TV. So transparent OLED screens ain't nothing new to me cause I had like a Johnson Controls glass thermostat. I never did a YouTube video on it and I don't know why but I did have one for a minute and it was just sitting on my wall so I saw it every single day and I got used to it. I still thought it was cool but I got used to it. So seeing a transparent OLED screen wasn't really nothing new to me. But still with that being said, seeing it on the TV was still pretty dope to see. And on top of that, it could change into a regular TV whenever you wanted to. That's pretty dope. And the last honorable mention is gonna be the Pojo. Am I saying that right? It's gonna be their Inception concept car. So again, I don't really know no details and nothing like that. I don't really know the specs and nothing like that, but just look at it from the outside. Look at the design. I think that was their whole point of pretty much just bringing it to CES. Cause if you looked at it when you got there, it was pretty much just spinning all day. I mean, when I saw that car and I saw like how futuristic and just like crazy it looked, I was just like, Yo, that's some back to the future stuff right there. If you look at that car and you was driving in that, you would look like a badass. Now at the same time, I don't think it could handle a couple potholes by the way it looked, but still, I thought that was dope. I love cars and I like that. Pretty much only detail I really know is that it's supposed to be a self-driving car, but we have like the Tesla, we have the Rivian, we have whatever else is out there. I can't really remember right now. I know we even got the Lucid Air out there and actually about that, my dad actually told me that he saw somebody with a Lucid Air and they showed him inside and everything, like right down the street from my house. And that was like way before MKBHD did a video on it and everything. And I live in Wisconsin, so you know we got the snow and all that, so I'm wondering how that's holding up. But that ain't got nothing to do with this video. I just wanna go talk about that real quick, but hopefully I enjoyed this, man. That's gonna be everything that I saw at CES that I was impressed by. If you saw some other CES coverage, which I'm pretty sure you did, let me know in the comments below and let me know what y'all thought was cool over there. I got some other stuff on there that I saw, like a Samsung Dex dock and all that, which I thought was pretty cool. I hit up the company, so maybe we'll go ahead and review it. I went over to the Govi booth and I actually want a Govi light, so I don't got it down here, but it's upstairs is my room right now. And overall, man, I gotta say CES was dope. I know some people got sick and they got COVID and all that, but to see all the YouTubers and all that there, I thought that was pretty dope, man. So shout out to y'all. But I don't know about 2024, man. We'll have to see about that. I might just stick with Kenosha. But hopefully I enjoyed this, man. Thanks for watching. And if you liked this video, go and give this video a like. And if you really liked it, go and subscribe. But go follow me on my social media, at Tech on Instagram and Twitter, and Facebook, but Instagram and Twitter is the most active. And also stay tuned because I ain't gonna lie, I forgot that I recorded a whole review. I think I might record like two reviews or something like that. I know I did record my review for the Lenovo Yoga 9.9. I just need to go and get my B-roll and all that and I'm straight. And also, as some of y'all know, I do own a business. It's called Renovate. So go to renovate.com and click on Trend Nation because that's the new service I have. I did some articles too for CES, so go and check that out. But I'm gonna get up out of here, man. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one then. Oh, peace out.